Thank you, NDBT, for uh, joining Energy Live News. I would like uh, to start uh, with uh, your innovative technology. Last year, we have talked about how your company plans to create a nano-diamond battery that could self-charge for up to uh, 28,000 years. At which stage uh, is your concept battery at the moment? Dimitris, thank you very much for your question. Um, so we are working very hard to release our products that we believe in demonstrating them to wider audiences across the globe. Um, and one of them will be, let me say, um, this a Swiss-made smartwatch that will never run out of charge. It's like a, uh, like a watch travels in time. And uh, we are building it with uh, well-known partners in Switzerland. So as I can understand, uh, these uh, smartwatches uh, will require a charge before using or not? Absolutely, it's going to be a smartwatch. So you're going to provide uh, the battery that uh, is going to uh, last a bit longer uh, than the conventional models? It, it's going to last till the device lifetime. So uh, it will just travel in time, let's say, so eternally provides the, the power to, uh, to the smartwatch. When are we going to see uh, these uh, smartwatches in the market? We, uh, we are in discussion with um, some of our partners in this regard, and according to our timeline, we should have the smartwatch released within 18 months. So regarding the uh, nano-diamond battery in other appliances, at which stage uh, is at the moment? Can you tell us in simple words how this technology will work? Yes, we can do that. So um, simply speaking, let, let's compare it with the current technology, so which is a solar panel, for example. So in this technology, the electricity is um, generated and converted from the sun's light. But while at NDB, we are using the decay of nuclear waste uh, or radioisotopes that will generate electricity. Um, so I, I will let my colleague Ishu, who is a nuclear physicist, to add a little bit more information about, uh, about uh, uh, this question here. So uh, NDB intends to use radioactive decay as the power source for its battery. So nuclear batteries provide energy density and stable power output throughout their lifetime. And these technologies are designed to operate for many years without service or maintenance. The science behind NDB is pretty straightforward and uses uh, conservation of energy and momentum as its core principle. Uh, so basically the DK uh, sources deposit their power onto the NDB transducer, which then converts the kinetic energy of the incident radiation to electrical energy. Uh, obviously the excess energy from the reaction is later collected by our NDB collector. Uh, storing the energy might be useful for future use in real time. NDB uses uh, ion implantation. From what you're saying, uh, I can understand that the battery will use uh, some kind of uh, nuclear waste. How you make sure that uh, this nuclear waste uh, that is being used for the battery will be safe in terms of radiation for the user? So NDB uses ion implantation or other techniques to encapsulate the uh, radioisot radioactive isotope into a transducer. So this basically uh, improves the efficiency of NDB, which previous generations were limited to, and the safety of NDB as the uh, isotope cannot tamper. And uh, various harvesting techniques uh, will also collect uh, the other forms of energy, and NDB is working on it. We are also considering other materials than a diamond as the transducer and integrate it with the uh, power source. So a single, a single stack could contain our implanted radioactive transducer thin flame and a sequence of collector and transducer flames to optimize the uh, current collection and produce the best power output. Obviously a diamond plays a key role for the safety aspect. So, so then depending upon the requirements, NDB would then uh, stack these to meet the desired needs. The development of thin flims using nanotechnology uh, obviously has enabled us to uh, evolve past the limitation of previous product in the battery market. Now, uh, in terms of the trials, uh, have you organized any trials of this uh, technology uh, in the last uh, one year? And at what kind of uh, applications did you manage uh, to make these uh, trials? So, so when it comes to the tryouts and, and, the, and the many applications that the battery has within the marketplace, it's, it's, it's wide ranging, right? When, when you're talking about replacing uh, current ways of utilizing energy or produ that produces energy, what NDB is proposing, it's, it's paramount, right? It's, it's a paradigm shift. And so the, the battery itself is designed to suit every one of our power needs. 
from the smallest to to the biggest ones, right? So when you when you look at devices that require energy that sometimes are implanted in the human body, uh, the energy source there shouldn't die, right? If the energy source dies and it's something that's embedded into into the body, it, it could be painful for for the human that has to undergo that process. And also, when when you're sending a a device, you know, across the planet or into the universe somewhere, it's a different planet. Uh, it's it's going to be really hard to charge uh, that battery, and so essentially NDB is is looking at these this wide broad scope of of demands that energy devices have, and 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 we're by design trying to uh, solve for it. So NDB, although smallest capacity, it's also handling a very high capacity uh, energy needs. So, so yeah, uh, currently we're, we, we are at the prototype phase, but the, the applications that the, the battery will have will, will go from the most micro needs all the way to the most biggest ones. From what you're saying, Andrew, I can understand that this uh, probably involves uh, a really complicated uh, you know, development procedures, uh, which is the, the biggest challenge for the development of um, the battery. The major challenge that we face with this tech is that uh, it, it contains radioactive material and the, the radiation damage to, to material that is you know being used to shield it right the the, the diamond uh, that's that's very core here so we we are taking all of the precautions necessary following all this the safety measures provided by laboratories to design something that contains this radiation from uh, leaking right and so getting this right is, is of the, the most paramount importance. So just, just right there, we have an, an issue. And, and, and if I may add, NASA in the early 2000s was also working with this, this the dynamic be, between uh, you know, how to use uh, radioactive uh, material to, to create power. And, and they were not successful. So that, that, that can give you a, a dimension of how difficult that is. So, uh, you know, NDB's differentiator is having, you know, this, this very dynamic uh, under control and under control in a way where in, in about five to six quarters, uh, we'll be releasing, you know, our, our products into the market. Which markets and areas could benefit from the application of the technology? Think about applications that uh, that are like satellites, rovers, hazardous environments. Uh, you know, material that needs a remote to terrestrial range. You can think about human implants, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Also, very popular item is the cryptocurrencies that require a lot of computational power mining, uh, as they call it, to be done. And fossil fuels that are being utilized to do that mining can be easily substituted by our batteries. Uh, your cell phone uh, is also a, a recipient of the benefits that the, the battery will provide. Your laptop, right? Uh, within a 10-year time frame, you're going to be charging your phone maybe... 5,000 times, we can reduce that to, to one or, or two, depending on, on the battery that we're talking about. So uh, we're, we're looking at a, a wide range of applications, crypto mining, watches, cars, space shuttles. Like, like I said, we, we're looking at the problem that humanity is facing of, of energy, of using uh, energy that is not clean, and also energy that is probably not efficient, therefore dying faster, uh, being consumed faster. So we're, we're, we're essentially uh, recycling this radioactive material and, and, and applying it in a way where it uh, can be used by humans uh, all, all around the world and, and even outside of this one to have clean energy and just have a clean energy for, for a longer amount of time, independent of what device or what application needed to be. Uh, NDB is, is essentially gearing towards designing an energy source perfect for the applications that you use every day. I left probably the most uh, exciting question of this uh, interview as uh, a last. Probably it is uh, something that our readers I uh, want uh, to know is when are we are we gonna see uh, this uh, battery that uh, probably could self charge for up to twenty eight thousand years? We should have the smartwatch released within eighteen months uh, from now, and um, you can imagine as well that you know when our battery hits the market. Um, it will change the concept of energy entirely, and it will have a tremendous impact on small or large businesses, industries, and societies. And um, we are developing the technologies and solutions that millions of people will use in their everyday lives, and we are working very hard 
towards the timeline uh, despite the pandemic. Uh, Georgie, how much do you think that these smartwatches uh, will cost? These smartwatches that will not need any charge? We are thinking to have a luxurious smartwatch and also uh, the smartwatches that could be accessible to, um, to, to every single person across the globe. So, yeah.